Ian, this was um, back in 1980, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. with Chester, right? That was, yeah, that was yeah. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's my first club, Chester. When I was 16, I signed for them and broke into the first team of 17. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just enjoyed my time there. We had a great run in the FA Cup for Chester. We got to the fifth round of the FA Cup, so, and we beat Newcastle away. And uh, that was my, most probably my first glimpse of um, playing in front of a big crowd. And when I, when I seen that, we beat them 2 0, I, yeah. I felt I want more of that. You know, so that gave me the first, that Chester gave me the first chance to say, I want to play in front of you know, maybe 30, 40,000 every week. Mm -hmm. And then you did, right? Yeah. Moving on. Well, that's some interesting. And then you joined there, yeah. Liverpool. So yeah. this is the boot room team. Yeah, you got Ronnie Rand, uh, Roy Evans, Joe Fagan, Tom Saunders there, you know, and mm -hmm. again, you know, like Steve Nichol and myself there, you know, if you weren't in the team, <clears throat> they'd want you on the bench there <clears throat> so you can learn the Liverpool way. That's what it was all about, you know. These three, they, you got Bob Paisley as well, he was there, and we had these people, you know, wanting to help each other. And mm -hmm. again, we, even though we weren't playing, you no, know, we're on the bench here, we're either injured or, you know, or not in the squad. What happened yeah. then? They used to put you on the bench, and want, so you're learning what they're saying, and you're learning that. So it was a great experience, even though you're not playing. Mm -hmm. It's a great experience. You no, know, listen to listen to what they say. Uh, that this is something that always be special for me again. You know, to uh, to win the European Cup is uh, no mean feat. And uh, you no, know, I, I was in the thing in 1981, but 1984 yeah. to do that. You know, to to win on penalties. And you no, know, I, I took a penalty in that game, and uh, it's most probably the most nerve-wracking part of my career. Yeah. To tell you the, yeah. the walk from the halfway line to the centre spot, you realise you know you're by yourself. You mm -hmm. know, when mm -hmm. when you're playing, there's a, there's eleven of you. Yeah. But I think when you're walking and all the uh, 80,000 booing you, you know, it's uh, very nerve wracking. And yep. I took a pe I took the penalty, you know, the goalie went really, really early, so it made my mind up. Mm -hmm. So I've done that. But uh, when you do score, it's most probably uh, being the most relieved, you know, mm -hmm. than any goal I've scored, you know, because you scored so you would a goal. Say that the best goal that you've ever I wouldn't scored, say would the best you say? Goal. No, no, I'd say the most your... relieved goal. Yeah. I wouldn't say the best goal. Yeah. You know, I'd say the one of them, and you've done part of your job for the team. Yeah, yeah. And the celebration afterwards. Yeah, yeah wow. that, that was something bus. special, yeah. You know, again, another sunny day in, in Liverpool and to, to come back and uh, to, they, they just bring back memories. Uh, you know, we've got Kenny Dalglish, you know, Bruce Grobler, Phil Neal, you know, Ronnie Whelan and myself. Yeah. So all that European Cup in front of like oh, half a million fans going through the streets is, uh, mm -hmm. it was absolutely, it was incredible. the celebration, um, the non-public celebration yeah. though? How, was, how did that go? Well, well, that was like everything. I think, in, think in Rome, we went to this castle after the game, you know, and we had a big party there. Oh, got the yeah. European people coming in, you know, supporters coming in then, you know, having a picture taken with the European Cup and yeah. <coughs> it's one of them, we didn't get much sleep, put it that way, you know, and then we, sure. you know, we come back, we come back to this and you yeah. just, you just carry on, I think, you know, it was the end of the season, it's time when you could let your hair down, you could celebrate and I think for two days then, you know, it was just one of them, it just doesn't sink in, uh -huh. so we just went, we had part, we were partying for two days, to tell you the truth, and, uh, wow. but it's because we enjoyed it, you know, it was of end course. of the season and we enjoyed that and uh, yeah. again, that's something that you'll never forget. Yeah. And more winning over here. Yeah. Again, oh. the double. Yeah, that's again, that was something special because the FA Cup, uh, I look at the streets and I know that all there's like, yeah, like a million amazing. people on the streets and it's, it's, it's always amazing after finals. It never rains, it always seems to be sunny as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's great to have the open top book, uh, bus. Uh, but for me, it, that was my dream really. My dream was to score a goal in the FA Cup final. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd won the league, I'd won the European Cup, mm -hmm. I'd won the League Cup. But at the end of the day, you know, when I was a kid, I dreamed about winning the FA Cup and to score the goal in the winning final. And yeah. I managed to do that. Yeah. And again, it was against Everton, our local rivals. Yeah, well, uh, really again, you know, we won the, beat them in the league the week before. Mm -hmm. It's the only time Liverpool have done a double. Oh, okay. So that was another major passing going on for two, three days. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. And then you moved on yeah. to Juventus for a year. What do you remember most about your time there? Well, I, it was... Um, for me, it was uh, sometimes when you leave Liverpool, you go to Juventus. Juventus was the Liverpool of Italy, mm. let me say. So, uh, but when I got there, what I missed really was most probably the dressing room banter. Okay. I think uh, it was very individual in Italy. Yeah. They're playing Juventus, great club, but they were very individual. And uh, Liverpool was more of a team game. Mm. And the football was very defensive in Italy. If we, won't, if we scored 1-0, we'd settle for 1-0 where Liverpool would try and win two or three or four nil. So I think it's very defensive football. I enjoyed the lifestyle there, yeah. I enjoyed the country there. <clears throat> but again, basically, looking back now, yeah. if I, I should have went to Italy and said that my name's Ian Rush, I'm the best player in the world. Yeah. I couldn't have said that at Liverpool because um, I'd say, okay, on you go. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that, that's the difference. Um, Liverpool was a team game and Juventus was more of a individuals. You know, it doesn't matter if your team lost as long as you scored. And I, mm -hmm. I wasn't brought up that way. I was brought up the team comes before any player. Okay. Yeah. And then you went back to Liverpool yeah. and won the Division One. Yeah, we were, that was uh, that, no yeah. to win that. It was absolutely fantastic again. You know, yeah. it's always great when you win. Uh, you take it for granted at that time. You know, Liverpool are going to win the league, and it's only when you don't win it you realise. You know, I know. Yeah. they haven't won since. I know. Well, yeah. that's the thing about it. <laughs> to, to win that is, uh, you think someone's you've told me. Um, you know, 15 years later, you know, Man United have more league trophies than Liverpool. No, you'd have laughed at them. But um, it's, a, it's number one there. It's the last time we won the league, and yeah. hopefully, um, very, very soon, no, that can be changed. <laughs> next year, maybe, next yeah, season. Yeah. <laughs> next one. That was you that was, at Wrexham. Yeah, you were Wrexham. player coach at this time. Uh, yeah, when I, when I left uh, Liverpool, then I went to Leeds and Newcastle, came back, and I had a, uh, Brian Flynn, who was a friend of mine, asked me would I go as a player coach at Wrexham. Yeah. You know, so I went there, I, I played, but obviously the football was different. Mm -hmm. But I learned my coaching badges at Wrexham, you know, and uh, a fella called Joey Jones, an ex-Liverpool player as well, he was, a, he was their coach as well. So I enjoyed the coaching side of it then. That's when you've got to get your brain, you know, you're not playing football no more. Yeah. What you have to do there is uh, get ready for, if you want to go on the coaching side of it. So I learned all my coaching badges at Wrexham. Mm -hmm. So that's another great experience into my, uh, the next part of my life as well. After that, you actually went back to Chester. To yeah, I, I went to Chester. I went to, obviously I went to um, strike a coach under Gerard Hooley at Liverpool. Then yeah. I went uh, to manage Chester for one year. Okay. You know, but uh, I looked at it and you, to, to be successful there, we've done really, really well. F first 14 games for Chester, no, we were unbeaten, so we had a great start. And I'd done what the chairman asked me to. But you have to have a great relationship with the chairman to be successful. Mm -hmm. and obviously. My assistant uh, got sacked and all that, so I decided, no, I needed, I needed to be in control of myself. I'm going to be manager. I'll yeah. take the responsibility if we've done well or if we didn't do well. And uh, that was out of my hands, so I decided to, to go uh, and, and just uh, no, to, to leave. And this was back in 2011, yeah. the last time that you were in KL. Do you remember the supporters? Yeah. like? Yeah, I remember yeah, all the time. You know, this is before the, this went. The, the game was on. Uh, mis, uh, myself, Phil Thompson, or Ian Air. Uh -huh. You know, we were just walking around, and the, the the reception we got. That's before the team came out. So uh -huh. uh, the reception we got was absolutely it was for fantastic. You, Ian. Oh yeah. It was your welcome. No, I always I say I, I come to Malaysia quite a lot. I've been coming here for another 10, 12 years, and yeah, uh, yeah. it's been. I mean, there's always a great re reception that you have here. You know, and it's great that the supporters love me. But at the end of the day, it's. It's, something, it's great for the um, not just for myself and Phil Thompson. Uh, it's for them to see the first team players. Mm. You know, they're seeing them in the flesh, mm. and that's what it's all about. You know, we see ourselves not just in Liverpool. Uh, the family club is worldwide, yeah. so we have to say the um, Wilpa. But it's a great experience to go around and see. You know, in the background, you know, look at all them red uh, shirts and everything, and uh, mm -hmm. they seem to be enjoying it as well. That's what I love about them. The fans are so fanatical here as they well. Are. I love the club. Mm -hmm. It's always the highest rated when Liverpool plays, you know, yeah, on TV. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's when the lack of success they've had. Imagine if they were successful. Yeah. They would, they, imagine if they did win the league. Yeah, no, I yeah, think it'd, it'd be, be absolutely, crazy, you know, yeah. maybe one totally. day we dream. And, but I think it can happen now. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next one with Platini. Yeah, this is when Liverpool played Juventus, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think is um, after the... Um, the high sill, you know, what happened and all that. We tried to bring the two clubs closer together. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what it's all about. And uh, I was very um, you know, uh, 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 proud, really, to you know, walk out with Michel Platini, you know, to say, you know, Liverpool and, and Juventus, no, we are, you have to move on. We'll never forget, yeah. you never forget, Isle, but you have to move on. And I think the gesture that Liverpool and Juventus showed, you know, when Michel Platini's come there and, and myself, I think it was a, a great gesture and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully you know that the clubs um, still stick together and uh, never forget it but yeah. uh, it's great for me to walk out on the, on the pitch with Michelle Platini to show that plaque mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Hillsborough again you know uh, with the Kenny Dalglish, Roy Evans and myself to um, mm -hmm. it's, it's after Hills but it's another tragedy as well where we don't forget as well yeah. you know we have to move on but we'll never forget and I think look at all the scarves now that's in the cup end you know Beautiful. it's absolutely it's incredible and uh, no, we, we just feel it's um, something we'll never forget and everything. But, um, but I just think, look at all the, the 
when, when that happened, Liverpool United as a city, a city you know, the Liverpool and Everton supporters got together yeah. and they're, they're fighting for justice and everything. So mm-hmm. I think that's what, that's what it just that, that picture there for me shows all, for all the scars all over the world. It's not just in Liverpool. They yeah. cut scars come from all over the world. Just shows to show how big Liverpool Football Club is. Everyone uniting. I know, yeah. Perfect. All right, that's it. Got I it? think that's oh. the last one. Okay. All right.